Hey guys, Scott from Realistic Outdoors. I know on the internet you've uh, been searching around looking for some alcohol stoves and you've seen these. Pretty standard double wall um, alcohol stove. I wanted to improve on this. So I have some seriously wicked safety improvements and some heat improvements. Stay tuned and I'll show you all how I did it. Okay, so the standard alcohol stove works amazing. Problem is, once it's full, you have to use it all up or find a bigger surface in which to snuff it because it's coming outside the second thing is if you dump this or bump this, all the fluid is all over and on fire and burning bushes down and whatnot. These are actually banned in quite a few of your states and a couple of our provinces now and I'm almost positive they'll be banned during any fire um, burning bans, open fire burning bans because of their safetyness. However, um, I have developed a safety for this which actually increases the heat by about 15 degrees also. So what I've done is I have carbon filter, a double layer screen and I have wicking on the inside of this. I'm going to go ahead, build one of these step by step. You guys can follow along. Here's some of the items that you're going to need. I use bubbly because I drink a lot of it but any can would work with a with the inside ridge the ridge is important for the double wall effect if you want it to be actually jetted and ported when it evaporates then you need the double wall um, I use some shears and a dollar store basket as you can see I use that for the mesh you can use pretty much any mesh you want and you'll see why, as long as it's metal, it can't be plastic. Um, you're gonna need a drill bit and a 16th, a 16th um, inch drill bit or two millimeters, depending on what side of the border you're on. I use a hole saw to make the actual original um, cut in the can. You could use a knife or snips if you prefer, but I find that to be faster. I'm a file which just kind of makes the edges a little bit nicer. So if anybody's playing with it, they're not gonna cut their fingers, which is ideal. Now, um, you'll need a marker, a stapler, and a drill, of course, for the drill bit, for both these drill bits. I have some carbon fiber mat. Um, this is the product here. You can buy it at Home Depot or Lowe's. I did that instead of ordering it online and ordering it online is much cheaper. However, it has some decent thickness, which is what's important. I also have, I have a piece of fiberglass from my shop, which is useful for the wicking and some stainless steel without the soap. Now in front of me, you'll see some blocks here labeled 30, 35, and 22 millimeters. I don't know what that converts to in inches. You'll have to Google that. I have them attached with knife blades and I use them to cut the cans or score the cans. You could use a um, pair of scissors if you like. I just find the accuracy of uh, getting it perfect all the way around. Um, these seem to be the answer for that. So I'm going to go ahead right now and get started on making one of these. So make some notes or follow along or hit pause and go grab the items you need. I'll wait. Okay, depending on what you want your stove to look like, you could you could paint this with high heat if you wanted to. Um, just score the paint of the can. You can sand it off with just um, this abrasive steel wool. This is double O. Probably um, zero 01 would work as well. I just want this to be finer so that I can shine it. The other thing is, this is a full can. It's much easier, believe me, to polish it and sand it when it's hard because otherwise, and I've done an actual example for you here, have a close look at the tin. You know, the aluminum is very thin, so if you try and polish that afterwards, this is what you get and you know that doesn't look very nice it works great but if you're looking for aesthetics and you want it to be perfect like that then you need to polish it first 
So I've gone ahead and done that already one. And this one is going to be my next one. But... Oh. All right. Okay, some of the things you want to do first before you cut this down is drill this hole. Well, you got something to hold on um, firmly and mark and drill the holes for your top on the other can as well. So I'm going to go ahead and do that first. Drill this hole, drill these, um, drill these out, mark them and drill them out. And then we'll go ahead and cut the can down. So first thing, obviously, you want to be very careful because this will, if it catches, tear your hand. So safety first. Find the center best you can. I have actually, um, and I don't have any more, I have a marble. You can set it in there and it'll actually roll to the dead center. And you can actually mark a circle around that. But I find this to be close enough if you, you just kind of eyeball it. So, pretty close to center. Now what size is this again? I, I'll have to double check for you when I pull this out right here. It probably says. It doesn't say, but I can tell you how many millimeters it is with my calipers. It is 40 millimeters and one and, what is that? One and a half inches, it looks like. Yep, one and a half inches. So there you go. So it's an inch and a half. And it fits perfectly inside. And by the way, you can make it fit exactly so there's no lip. Or you can have it so that there's a little lip. And now I've been doing the little lip, and I'll tell you why. Um, two reasons. One is it keeps your mesh from, from falling out. Second of all, it actually increases the heat back on this rim. I found that it actually will um, uh, light the, the outside, ignite the outside faster with that little bit of a lip. So, um, so I've been using a smaller drill bit or a smaller hole, hole saw. Okay, you can see that I have a ridge left around there. It's very sharp, you have to be careful. So this is where you want to take your file. Just clean those edges up so that you can write a finger in there. And nobody gets hurt. I like to smooth it a little bit more with a piece of sandpaper. So I have a strip here, it's pretty rough, it's 80 grit. It's from a belt, so it's pretty rigid. And I can curve it. I just go all the way around like that until, until it's all smooth. And I won't bother boring you with all this. So we'll go fast forward. Now we're back. Nice and smooth. Nobody's gonna cut their fingers. No rough edges. Next thing I wanna do, because this is the top, this is where the burner is, I need to mark and drill those holes so that they're not all willy-nilly. Nobody likes willy-nilly. Just take a black sharpie, roughly guess the center part of that, using your finger as the guide once you have it kind of marked. Just roll that around. And now my sharp is not working. Hmm. I only use the thick end. I don't like the thick end. But once you find the center, just roll, roll around.
There you go. So now I have it marked and I'm in the center. Second thing I want to do, you've probably seen this on the internet, you take a piece of tape, wrap it all the way around. Mark here, I'll just do it for you guys, just in case you haven't seen it. Now let's pretend this tape is unmarked. Let's go all the way around and then put two marks, one on the other piece on one side and then one on this side, so that you know exactly the length of the can. So there are different can sizes, so you could use like a Red Bull Mini or you could use like a Foster's can, which is quite a big one, or those um, Arizona iced teas are quite a bit thicker, so you could make a fatter one. Once you have that, lay it on the, on the table and then measure the distance between those two lines and then find out what exactly measurements um, work in between. I used millimeters because the whole thing worked out to, what was it now? Uh, it's been a while, 210. So, and millimeters does easy, quick, fast math, but you don't have to do it. 210 millimeters divides into how many? That's right, 21. So I use 21 holes. So anyway, put that back on the can. And then once you have those, just go back around with your Sharpie then you could mark those spots. So you have a one at every centimeter. All right. Believe it or not, the most painstaking part of this whole episode is polishing this can. Really everything else is quite easy. Okay, so I have those with graduated marks now, every centimeter. So, now you want to drill them up. Change this out for my 16th inch. Now you're not gonna sit and wanna watch this because it is like watching paint dry. So I'll do a couple and then I'll fast forward. You can use a Dremel or something if you like. That'd probably be okay for sure because this is heavy. And you have to go slow because as soon as you punch through, this will ram in and the actual clamp will get the at the edge where the burner is going to be, which is no bueno. Now you could quickly buff those marks up if you want with your stainless steel. You see it goes away pretty quick. Or you could just leave it on there until the first burn. They come off at the first burn really nicely, but just so I can see them. Just quickly remove it. It's like a magic eraser. Right there. So now we have all our 16th holes. So next thing we gotta do, we gotta cut this to size. So the the top is my smallest piece underneath. So I'm gonna use my 22 millimeter. So exactly from the bottom of your block to your knife edge. And how I do that, I just actually, now you see I have this knife on an edge and I have just enough space so I can actually lay the can into it. So now all you do, and you don't want to press too hard, but all I'm doing is scoring. And believe me, when I started this, 
I was just using scissors because I thought, yeah, it's faster. And it is. But you also destroy a bunch of the can getting down to it. And I reuse all these pieces in the center for the actual inside wall of these. So uh, two reasons. One is I have a very accurate um, size and two is I get to reuse the centerpiece. So I'm not using as many cans. And I'm putting a little pressure on it, but I don't want to dent the can. So you can feel it dragging. You know it's coming for sure. And once I've gone around two or three times, I'll, I'll puncture it. And that should be good enough. So I'll puncture it here, hopefully. Maybe it's not as far as much as I thought it was. There we go. Okay. So once it's punctured, you can see right where we go. Oh, right there. Now I can just follow along with my finger. And it will break apart perfectly. So now you have the absolute perfect ring. And nice and flat and smooth and very aesthetically pleasing. So that's the key. So now I need to make the bottom. And I am not finished with that can, so I gotta go grab another one. <clears throat> Depending on the height of your stove, because you can adjust these heights. This is just my preference. Um, you can, you don't have to polish the top of this. Uh, I have a little bit that sticks out, but then I also have an edge where I knurl it over so that this these two don't come apart. So um, you don't have to polish the top if you don't want to. So here's my 35 millimeter block. Let's just pretend I actually cut this one already. So that is the magic of television. So that's my ring for the center. And now I have my 30 millimeter, which wasn't quite enough, but I have a shim inside there now. So outside to the knife is 30 millimeters. So now I'm gonna cut the bottom part of the can. And we'll just fast forward through this because it's the exact same process. There's the bottom. Just to make sure that all the edges are cleaned. This will be slightly exposed. Okay, so there's top and bottom of your Now, the inside wall. Where's my scissors? So, snip that straight up. Okay, again, of course, that's 35 millimeters. And now the goal is to make this fit inside that ridge. So you basically just form it, push it down until it hits that ridge and then it sits in there solid. Now you have a double wall. Now, what I do once I have that spacing, and it's exactly how I want it, I pinch the overlap, grab my stapler, staple it at the leading edge of the overlap and then at the trailing edge of the overlap. Now keep it up nice and high so the staples are right up right up top. I'm going to keep them up nice and high because they're going to hide up inside the stove. Also what I do is I put a little bend into the into the staples so it doesn't have a flat spot. So I'm going to drop that in there now and I connect the other piece. We're going to have a double wall. Now one thing we need to do before we start putting that together, we need little notches out the bottom. So when you pour in the alcohol into here, it'll run off of the concave or convex piece in the bottom of the can into the grooves between the walls. So it'll be inside this between the new wall that we just put. That way you have a vapor chamber. 
So once it heats up and primes, the actual gases comes out of the... So the heated fuel will um, evaporate and or vaporize and then come out out your holes and ignite on the outside because burning out of here uses way too much fuel and it's nowhere near as hot so what I do with these is uh, I just take a little clip where did I start that one not a complete V because I don't want to I don't want to take the part out I want to leave that little you can see that close up so I leave that up and the reason being is it just gives me a little space a little standoff all the way around I'll show you um, once I have these all cut so you don't want much bigger than that so measurement wise what is that that is half half a centimeter so that's point point two yeah yeah half a centimeter so also doing it on the where you have the folds locks the bottom half of the fold as well I mean, you don't have to use staples on the bottom. You could you could do those little cuts and they will hold it in place, but I don't want it to come apart. So, top down view. That's what we're looking at there now. So, when you see that in there, you'll actually see that they stand off against the outside wall. Pretty cool, I know. Don't get so excited, slow down. All right, here comes the insulation part. So you tear yourself off, not a lot. And then I use, well, I didn't bring it with me, but this will work fine. So you just poke that down around the sides, keeping it in place. And don't put too much because you don't want to lose the shape of your, of your, inside wall now so you don't have to put a lot like we're not trying to use it to wick all the way up as much as um, just kind of keeps the fuel down there from leaking out um, if you go and put a little extra in there so like a two and a half ounce burn instead of a standard two ounce burn what can happen is as the vapors get hot this will start to pressurize and the liquid can actually start squirting out and you'll get a little fire squirt going on not good so this insulation around the outside is something that i've been doing i haven't seen this done it is new to me and hopefully new to you so it's the second safety feature that i have in here okay now we need to cut um, this carbon felt. So I have a little um, I have a little template. So basically, I I did this and drew the inside circle, and then cut on the outside of the circle because I don't want it the same size as that circle. I wanted it a little bit smaller. So you could use um, your can wall before you put the um, fiberglass in. You could keep this and lay it out to trace, which worked good, but I already did that once, so I have that right over here. So there's my template already. So it is the almost the exact size of that hole. Just a slight bit bigger. Okay, if you have a white pencil crayon, you can use it to, to outline this already, but I find it's just, just as quick to, to cut around it holding my template and if it's a little bit bigger that's okay there's one does it have to be a perfect circle no but 
doesn't hurt. So there's one, and I'll do a second one. Okay, now we got the two ready to go. Now you can just put them in there if you want now. Probably simpler. And you don't want to press them down too, too hard. Once you start pushing them down, the actual outside wall will come up. So, so now I have insulation around the outside and I have the carbon insulation belt on the inside. Perfect. Now, Okay, now putting the cap on. Obviously the same size, and if you haven't seen any of the other videos, you're gonna need a needle nose pliers. Um, I prefer these hemostats. Um, I use these for fishing to take the hooks out, but I like the actual um, size of better for this. So in this, I'm gonna go almost a half up on the space, and I'm gonna twist, pinch hard, and twist once. So you can see what's happened. And where's the pinch? Right there. I'm gonna do that every centimeter because there's 21 all around here. And now while you're fitting this together, you have to be very cautious that this inner wall is actually lining up into here. Otherwise it won't push down or it'll bend the inner wall. Now, before we get any further, let's make the mesh. So, I have that same template and I'll just mark it on this garbage can, this poor, poor garbage can. Okay. So once that's transferred, get your snips. And just make that circle. I'll just quickly cut this piece on. It's not gonna rough, but you can see I got the markings on there. So I'll just cut that off. I I go to the outside because I want to be able to bend in some. Let's see what I mean. So leaving a little extra. So you see what I mean? It it's there's more there than if you make it exactly the same size, it can slip. So you can take any of your pliers, or needle nose pliers. I happen to have these end nippers, and I just go in a little bit and then bend down, and I do that all the way around. Kind of giving it a ridge and now I'm actually making the ridge on the marks that I made for the cutting so it should be close there'll be a little fine-tuning when you get to the end okay so you can see it has like the ridge on it now. So now I just keep fine tuning until I can get it to fit. Almost. Just a couple more tweaks. Better to start big than to have it too small. 
you want this to be in there tight. Okay, once you got that all sized up, and it's got the little ridge. Um, if you've had to bend lots up and it's too long, just take your, you know, your trimmers and then clean those edges just so you have a basically a bottle cap shape. And you can test it going in this direction to see if it'll go in first. And if it's just about to go in, then that's perfect. So now we want to sneak it in here this way, which should be a little harder. Gotta get it underneath the staples. And the walls are flex the wall is flexible, so you can maneuver it a little bit. Okay. And that is in there nice and tight. Now if you push that too far if you push that hard too hard, it starts sliding the outside wall up and and you don't want that. So it's got you can see it's got some movement. Now we want to get the lid on to lock all that in place. Now again, keep in mind we, we're trying to keep that ridge inside this ridge. Oops. So you want to go down evenly. You don't want to go down one side too far. So just kind of keep working it slowly around the edges. Pressing. Just verifying that that ring is staying in place and then keep pressing. Now the size of this is cut exactly and measured exactly so it'll end right on the edge. So right now there's just a little bit left. That's the final seat and you want to go just ever so slowly and now we're there. Now it's <clears throat> all the way. So you see, and there's just a tiny bit hanging there. So now what I like to do <clears throat> is roll that edge over. And you can use the back side of scissors, or in this case, I use these hemostats, and I just roll over, locking that into place. So that's it. Now, those edges are curled over. They're not, it's not there anymore. It's curled over the top edge. That is one completed uh, alcohol stove with the safety. Now the next thing is, and I'll show you my demo is that you can actually fill this with the two ounces and knock it over or carry it and it won't leak. Now you can also make a cover. I'll go grab it. Okay, so what is it? So it's the bottom of another can. I've run a split in it and then run some aluminum tape over it so that it's just slightly wider than than the can. But when I'm packing it, I take that with me. And then if there's any leftover alcohol in there, um, you just seal it up like that. Then it won't evaporate. So you still have storage and it won't leak because it's absorbed into the into the the sidewalls and into the carbon filter. Also, I use this as a snuffer. So if I'm done, I just lightly put that over top and put the flame out. So give that a try. And I'm going to show you some video now on actually this particular one. You can see it's got some char marks in it. I took this out fishing with me out in the ice and um, made some coffee. And I cooked my, my dehydrated dinner with this. Thing works amazing give it a try hope you like it